Hello everyone. This hour on Verbling, the, not the next in anything, the first in my series on idioms. Today is animal idi idioms. Do you have a frog in your throat? Does mousy hair mean you have cheese in it? What does parroting someone really sound like? Come in today and find out. We're going to go over some of your favorite idioms and hopefully learn some new ones that you've never seen before. <laughs> So we'll get started in just a second. Let me get my name on the board and give people a minute or two to come in. There we go. So I'm John Eric, your verbal teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, coming at you today from Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. By the way, if you click on that link in the verbal chat window, you can follow me by clicking the follow button to see all my upcoming group classes. And of course, you can book a private tutoring session with me as well. Just send me a message so I can make time for you on my schedule. And let's abbreviate the introduction today because we're starting a little bit late. Let me say hello to everyone, put the presentation on the screen, and we will get started. So here's the material. And let's say hello to Ms. Sabrina. Hello, Sabrina. How are you? Hello, John. How are you? I'm fine. Excellent. Very good. Jose, how are you doing? Hello, John. I'm doing very well. And you? <laughs> Let's see if Carmen's doing well. Carmen, are you doing well? Okay. Yeah. Carmen? Ooh. Sorry, no, no. Ah. Was, no, no. The chat was loading. Sorry, it takes a little bit. I'm fine. <laughs> what about you? Pretty good. That's me in the middle. <laughs> Can you see me? Yeah, the penguin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see if we can let's see if we can identify some ones that you probably know and move on to some that you probably don't. Like this one. Notice notice that not only is the elephant pink. He's the only one that isn't drinking beer. Did you notice that? He's different in every way. Let's mm -hmm. say hello to Mr. Oh, no, I can't pronounce your name. It looks like, is it Gregor? How do I say your name? Uh, <coughs> hi. It's actually Gregor, but people, usually English people cannot, or American people cannot pronounce my name, so they call me Greg or Gregory because it's much easier. It is easier. Yeah. Let me hear. Let me hear you say it one more time. Okay, Zegos. Zegos. Yeah, but <laughs> good or bad? Um, I don't know. I'm not really <laughs> hard to judge. So so. <laughs> so so. Uh -huh. That's what I could hear. I could hear. One more time. One more time. Give me another chance. One more time. But we can go with much easier version. Um, which is actually uh, how friend call me, not actually how I sign on most of the papers. Uh, Zeszek. Like like Zizek? Zeszek. Zeszek. Okay. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> I, d I dare any of you to do better. I dare you. <laughs> Come on. Bring it on. Uh, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. Oh, I forgot to say Mr. hello to Mr. Shinue, back from the river. Hello, Mr. Shinue. How are you? I am alive. You're alive? Good. Yeah. <laughs> that, Mr. Shinue, that is the minimum requirement for this class, that you be alive. If you're alive, I'm yeah. afraid you cannot participate. Uh, hey, take a look at this, everyone. Oh, no, not this. This is our class... A class clock. I never follow this, but I'm going to try. 10 to 15 minutes of learning new things, 10 minutes of applying it, and then the last part of the class is all speaking. In the last two minutes, we should do a quick reflection. That says reflect. It should say reflect. How come no one told me that I spelled that wrong? Yeah. It should say reflect. <laughs> That's been there. That's been there in every class for, for like a year, 
And no one's ever told me that I spelled it wrong. Anyway. Yes. I knew this, but I didn't tell you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I was start wondering <laughs> what I knew it. You got a new word. To reflect. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Here we go. Now, I'm going to challenge you because in the teaching part of this class, in the learning part, I'm not actually going to give you the answers, but I'm going to give you a few clues. I've given you some US versions and some UK versions, but the only thing I can tell you here is that it's either cats or dogs, with one exception. The idiom is either cats or dogs. So let's do this in pairs, shall we? Let's start off with Carmen and Mr. Zizek. Can you be A, Carmen, and you be B, Mr. Zizek? Let's see if you can get the missing word. Want to try? I okay. can. Uh, Trevor and Sue are so arrogant. <clears throat> oh, this is going to be challenging. Give it a try. Me? Mr. Zizek, read okay. B for us. Zizek. 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 This G. G. Okay. Um. <laughs> Zizek. Zizek. Maybe, maybe almost. You, almost. <laughs> maybe, we'll st maybe we'll stay on Greg or Gregory because it will be easier. I just, need to, I just need to hear you say it. I need to hear it like three times in a row. Give me say, three times in a row. <clears throat> okay. Grzeszek. 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 Yeah, Grzeszek. Is that better? Grzeszek. Uh, yeah, a little, a little bit better. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's hard sound. <laughs> okay, send me an MP3 where you say it 20 times in a row, and I'll repeat it after okay. class, and the next time <laughs> I'll have it perfect. Uh, Mr. G. Try try to read B and see if you can figure out. Now remember, you can choose one of those expressions at the bottom, but you've got to choose whether what sounds better, cat or dog. And there's a clue there. It means better than everyone else. I don't know. The whiskers. Mm -hmm. So read the whole sentence. Let's see how it sounds. Yes, they think they they are the whiskers. I know, but you gotta choose cat or dog. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> cat or dog. Mm -hmm. Which one sounds better, cat or dog? Do you think? Make an educated guess. Is it cat cat's whiskers or dog's whiskers? Oh. Remember, you're not supposed to know the answer. You're supposed to guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, um, I'm not guessing dogs. Maybe I would try with dogs. <sighs> so the answer would be, yes, they think they're the dog's whiskers. Yeah? Mm, whiskers, dog's whiskers. No, cat whiskers. Cat whiskers. Yeah. What do we think, class? Sabrina, uh, you're, no. a, you're a cat. Do you think it's cat's whiskers? Yes, because they don't have whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think cats, but they, they're cats. I don't understand because you already have uh, the in the phrase. I have dog in which phrase? Which phrase, Sabrina? A dog? Sabrina, which phrase? The letter B. Then, where do I have dog? Yes, they think they're the blank. And then down below, you've got you've got a blank's life, a blank in the manger, the blank's whiskers, the blank's chance in hell, another version of the blank's chance in hell. When I say blank, I mean the missing word, and the blank's pajamas. And Carmen, you're saying dogs don't have whiskers. Is that yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Do you have Do you have dogs? Uh, no, no. But I used to have. 
Do they, do they have whiskers? No. I don't have a dog. I don't know. I've never looked no, at a dog. No, but you've got a cat, and your cat, <laughs> and your kitty's got whiskers. I'm sure of it. It sounds I like Mr. G. I have two dogs and two cats. <laughs> do your dogs have whiskers, Sabrina? No. No. It's dangerous. Okay. So, and whiskers. What? What are whiskers? Wait a second. What are they? You can see in the drawing. You can see it in the drawing. So whiskers are those sort of pointy hairs that stick out. And I guess you're right. Dogs probably don't have whiskers. What about people? Do people have whiskers? Yes. It, um, hmm. it will be similar to uh, uh, the bird in people, no? Beard. The beard. Beard. You can... You can say someone has whiskers. It's true. You can say it. It's kind of like a. It's. I guess it's a little bit like slang or something mm. like that. But yeah, you can say it. So people I, can have whiskers, and cats mm. can have whiskers. And Mr. Shinyway has whiskers. Teacher, you have a lot of whiskers. I do not. <laughs> Look at me. Open your me. camera. You. Look you. At you. Me. He has she, she no, no, no. The, no. The teacher doesn't have. Oh, where is Hazam? Nothing. I have nothing. I shake it off. He said this morning. Masculine. <laughs> it's like the first time I shaved all week, just for you, Shinway. So, Mr. Mr. G, I think you're on the right track. But let's not stop there. Let's go to Mr. Jose. Can you read A? And Sabrina, can you read B? For the next okay. one, sorry, next one. Mm -hmm. Do you do you think uh, he'll get uh, the job? With no qualifications or experience, he hasn't got. Um... And the idea is no chance at all. Take a look at those yeah. expressions at the bottom, and you uh -huh. tell me if it's dog, or cat, or something else. Uh, dogs chances in hell. A dog's chance in hell. Hmm. Yes. Curious. <laughs> we'll find out in just a minute. Hold on to that thought. Uh, let's go to Mr. Mr. G. I'd like you to read A, and Mr. Shinyue. I'd like you to read B for the next group. Actually, it looks like it's three all together, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> Is it? No, no, it's two. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. G. Okay. Um, it is not fair that we have exam immediately after the school holidays. <laughs> there you go. I know. It's uh, blank. Left the hard and uh, unpleasant. unpleasant. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea. Life is hard and unpleasant. It's a... It's a what? What do you think? The, it's the dogs. It's a... Uh, Cat's pajamas. <laughs> it's the cat's pajamas. <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Because <laughs> you, because you know, it's not fair when the cat wears your pajamas. I get the logic. Yeah. It's life is hard when you have to put your cat in your pajamas. Could be. We'll find out in a minute. Could be. Could be. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice already. Uh, I often make your cheeks hurt. <coughs> uh, yes. But Relax. It's good. It's Relax. Good. It's good. Let's try it like this. Uh, Carmen, you've got to be a B because you did an A. So, Sabrina, I'd like you to read A for the last one. And, Carmen, you do our B. I know I don't need the car over the weekend, but I don't want you to use it either. Um, I, I think I know this one. Um, don't be such a, a dog in the in the manger. Don't be such a dog in the manger. And what's a manger? Do you know? A manger. Well, I, I know this expression, a dog in the manger, is like. Um, 
uh, you, are, you don't really need it, but you don't want anybody else to 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 do it, to 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 have it, even though you you're not going to use it. Exactly. It? But mm -hmm. what but what is a manger exactly? Do you know what a manger is? No, no. I don't Place know. Where animals live or are. Ah, okay, okay. I know mm -hmm. this. I know this. A manger. Kai. Can I answer this? But she already answered it. What do you mean? You mean what is a manger? Uh, mm. Go for it. A uh, mm, manger means uh, a equipment horse unit uh, to eat food. Uh, the you mean the actual place where we put the food? Is that what you mean? The the container? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Ah, yes. but the container, I think, is. No, it's a place. It's a place. I think. The, the place is the manger, but the container is like a, like I would say a trough, maybe. That long bin where you can put animal feed is a trough, I think, if that's what you mean. But I'll get a picture on the screen in a second. First, let's look at your answers. Here are the official answers, everyone. Mr. G, you were correct. The cat's whiskers. Yay! A cat's chance in hell, not a dog's chance in hell. Now, wait a second. There's one way you could figure out why is it a cat's chance in hell. What, are yes. cats, what do cats have that dogs don't have? Special thing do cats have? Oh, oh yes, yes, seven lives. That's it. How many lives? Seven. In America, they've got nine lives. Oh my God! Yeah. More. <laughs> really? Yes, we get two extra. We give our cats two extra. Yes. <laughs> so I need to buy a cat from United States. You need to buy an American cat, and you get two yes. extra lives. That's yes. true. That's good. <laughs> yes. They come with a longer warranty, a longer guarantee. <laughs> and notice, the American expression isn't with a cat at all. If you look at the bottom, it's a snowball's chance in hell, not a cat's chance in hell. So we've got the UK expressions on one side, and we got two American expressions. And then, instead of the cat's whiskers, in America we'd say, it's the cat's pajamas. Yeah, you know, they think they're the cat's pajamas. Yeah. It's like from the jazz age. All right. So those are cats and dogs. But what about this? This one's a little more challenging. In some cases, you have to tell me what it means. In other cases, you have to see if you can figure out the idiom based on the meaning. And these are all on the farm. Farm animals, not just cats and dogs. OK? So what do you think, Jose? To flog a dead horse, you're flogging a dead horse, trying to persuade Kim to move house again. Does that make sense? So see if you can explain the meaning or give a second example. Either way it would be OK. What do you think, Jose? Floja dead, dead horse. First, we need to clarify what it means to flog something. Okay, to flog something. Uh, to flog something is um, when you yes, when you beat uh, someone, no? Exactly. To beat or whip is to flog. Exactly. To beat or whip. So, Jose. Yes. Can you explain or give another example of flogging a dead horse to persuade Kim to move house? In other uh, words, in other words, what? <clears throat> Does Kim when when want to when move? you when you when you are um, the meaning of this expression is that uh, it could, could be when you are uh, wasting time. Wasting time. Hmm. Okay, give me another example then. If it's wasting time, 
I think you're, you're actually almost there. You're 75% right. When you are the, trying to do something mm -hmm. that in the in the future this this thing uh, won't succeed. <laughs> well, that's that's the definition. <laughs> that's the exact definition that I wrote on the next page. <laughs> so. The, the, when, when, when you uh, so achieve example, the, 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 the desire or result, when, so when, when have you... Have you ever flogged a dead horse, Mr. Jose? Have you ever flogged a dead horse? Um, and if so, were you arrested for it? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I have ever a uh, dead ho horse. Well, one year when I was studying, I was studying at the university. Yeah. I, I, I was uh, one year wasting time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? Why were you wasting time? Because I was trying uh, to do something that uh, after that, uh, um, after that uh, this. After that, this thing uh, uh, don't don't have a good uh, succeed. It didn't succeed. Did, did, didn't succeed. Okay, didn't All succeed. Right. Sorry. So the sentence could be something like, "All that time I spent in school felt yes. like flogging a dead horse. Didn't yeah. get me okay. anywhere." Something okay. like that. All right, Mr. Shinyue, what's yours? What's your version? Hi, teacher. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hmm. Hey. Learning English in the real class is uh, like uh, blocking a dead horse. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <laughs> but why? <laughs> hey, from my experience, I spent uh, a lot of energy and time on the real class, mm -hmm. but uh, I cannot speak for a long time. But uh, I spent uh, a few months on warbling. I I totally communicate with a native speaker, Freni, like you. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is true. I but, couldn't, uh, agree, couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree more with you. But, uh, uh, un but uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't realize their trade in the future. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mm -hmm. tried to study I tried to study Russian in real classes in a in a classroom, and uh, the word isn't flogging a dead horse. It was more like strangling it with my hands. <laughs> That's what it felt like. <laughs> I, I I learned I learned a lot of um, I learned a lot of grammatical terms, but I I couldn't speak a word of Russian because then when I went to I went to Brooklyn where all the Russians are, I couldn't understand a word. I could say a few words, but I couldn't understand what they were saying. I thought I knew how to speak, and I did. I couldn't agree with you more. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Mr. Daniel, why don't you come on in? We've got plenty of room here. Okay, so this is how we're <laughs> going to... He's saying hello, but come on in, Daniel. This is how we're going to do this. In the next one, you've got to guess the example. You've got to figure out what the expression is, and the meaning is already there for you. Oh, look, there's a mirror. Come on in, Amir. We've got plenty of room. So, <laughs> Mr. G, do you think you can figure out this expression? The meaning is from the person concerned, directly from the person concerned. Um, so someone is concerned, so someone is thinking about it. He is maybe pay attention on what is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This has to do with where you get your information from. 
So take a look on the idiom column and tell me if you can figure out what animal goes in that red box on the left side. Um, it could be an animal. Mm -hmm. It's it's got to be a farm animal. On this slide, it's all farm animals, so not cats and dogs. Okay. <laughs> so, in other words, imagine for a second, you said you heard a rumor, you know, something that may or may not be true, and you say, "Oh, I don't believe in rumors," and I say, "No, no, no." I heard it straight from the what animal? <laughs> what animal do you think fits there? So it's a little test of your knowledge of idioms. By the way, these are all very advanced idioms. I don't expect you to know it, but take a guess. I don't know. It won't be pig, cow. It won't be a horse. It won't be. Uh... Why not? Oh my God! Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, why not? <laughs> you, you just you just listed exactly the animal that it was, and you said it wasn't. <laughs> so what did you say, Mr. G? You said from the horse mouth. Excellent, and that's it. Straight from the horse's mouth. Why horse? <laughs> because horses don't speak. All right. <laughs> so, so you wouldn't expect a horse to tell you something, but in this case, you're like, no, 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 the horse told me. Really, it's true. I think that's the reason. There's another reason, Mr. G. We had a famous talking horse in America called Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed, the talking horse. Did anyone see Mr. Ed, the talking horse? Hmm. No, I didn't. It rings a bell, but I can't remember. You mean... You mean you didn't watch television in the 1960s? No? It's a TV show what? for the 1960s. Mr. Ed. Not only yeah. did the horse talk, but he also sang. Talking and singing. Perhaps it was not broadcasted in here, so that's why. I don't know. Well, we have to change But it, that. Rings, it rings a bell, I think. <laughs> hey, that's an idiom. It rings a bell. I have to make a new page for that. So, Mr. G, uh, what have you heard from the horse's mouth? Straight from the horse's mouth. Anything come to mind? Yeah. Sounds weird, but yeah. So, you have to think of a person that we might not expect you to know or you to have talked to. For example, I could say uh, um, there's a brand new... There's a brand new uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything new. <laughs> there's a there's a brand new app coming out. It's going to revolutionize the world. I heard it straight from the horse's mouth. I spoke to the head of Google, and he told me. I don't know. Bad example. Mm -hmm. Think of, think of no. an example. <laughs> think of an example from your own life, if you can. Okay? And we'll put it in the chat window. And then that way, later on, we can collect these sentences and you can test yourself. So wow. if anyone has a good example of hearing something straight from the horse's mouth... So someone... Uh, so I'm um, thinking about the answer from someone who I should not expect this answer. Precisely. Precisely. Uh, so maybe, 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 maybe... Um, let me think. Mm -hmm. mm. Um. You think for a minute. We'll come back. Actually, no. <laughs> um, salesman told me. No, not not a salesman. Um, uh, you have to first say what you heard. Say something that we might not believe. Like okay. Jose's example. I know it's true. I heard it from the horse's mouth. Well, you might. You got to first say something that is incredible. No, I, just, I don't know why. I cannot just make up any examples right now. Maybe someone else. <laughs> I'll give you one. Hey, did you hear that John Eric, the verbling teacher, is running for president of the United States? Yeah, some, something. Did you hear that? Yeah? No. 
Guess what? You're going to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Hi there. I'm the horse. He's running for president. It's true. See how that works? All right. <laughs> the next one, I want you to figure out the meaning. If you're not sure about the meaning, try to create an example of your own. Ms. Sabrina, until the cows come home. You can argue until the cows come home, but I'll never agree. What does that mean? You can argue until... Uh, you have a lot of time to argue in this case. You have a lot of time because the cows are very slow. <laughs> Is that it? No, but because the cow only go home uh, in the end of the day, I believe. Ah, I ah okay. Okay, I see what you mean. <laughs> I see what you mean. Cows are like hanging out in the field. Well, you got the right idea, right? It takes it, uh, a long time. So basically the answer is yes, that's the idea. You can argue until the cows come home. You can keep going on and on and on and on, but I'll never change my mind. So you can take as long as you like. I think that's a, not a bad definition, actually. Okay. So what about this one? Find the people or the things of high quality. This is a definition from a group of mixed quality. Hmm, that's a little bit abstract. Sort out the blank from the blank. So this, you might need a little bit of help with this. To find the good things in a group of things that are not good and good. Oh, look at that, Carmen. I didn't see your example. I just saw it right now. By the way, Carmen, tell us about your example. Why is that a good example? I think it is a good example. Well, I mean, it's like uh, she, she already has about 10 kids. <laughs> And now she's bringing that again, <laughs> so nobody believes it. Exactly. No one believes it. Right, right, right. It's something we wouldn't expect or it's something incredible. Annette is pregnant again. I heard it straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> Pussy. All right. So this one is sort the what from the what. Find the good quality things inside a group that it may be good and may be bad. Pick out the little gems, in other words. Anyone have this one? This is a British idiom. Americans say it a little bit differently. Think about your farm animals. We've got horses. We've got pigs. What else have we got? Sort of the 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 what? And from the boys. Could be. <laughs> the men from the boys. But to be it's, a good, farm. it's a good guess, but men and boys are not really farm animals. Some are. Yeah. Some are. But most aren't. <laughs> and the men from the boys is uh it's a uh it's a uh what is it? It's a nineties band, isn't it? Men to boys? Never mind. Yeah, it was a music man. Yes it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got it now. <laughs> You'll be I, don't, I, I don't know their songs, but I know yeah. that they were a group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not sort out the men from the boys, but Jose, that is a good expression, by the way. It means something else. It, it's like you know who's really tough, who's really, who's really a man. So that expression does exist, but this is with farm animals. Going once. Going twice? Nobody? Maybe Sheep. I will guess. Maybe. Sheep. Maybe. Sheep. Goats. Say again, Shinue? I think you got it. Sheep. Goats. So say the whole thing? Can you give me an example? Can you give me an example? Mm. Hey. It's uh, very difficult huh, for me. Sort out. Uh, the ships from the goats. Excellent. It is very difficult for me to sort out the sheep. No sheeps, but the sheep is plural. Oh, the sheep, sheep, sheep from the goats. 
Now we just need a reason so that we have a context so it makes more sense. Because why? Because for example, because this problem looks exactly like that problem. I don't know. It's hard for me to sh it's hard for me to sort out the sheep from the goats. It's hard. By the way, I don't know which one is the things of high quality, sheep or goats. I don't know which one we're going for. I guess it's the sheep. <laughs> I don't know if I fully understand the logic behind this one. But sheep from goat is correct. Okay, and I'll give you an example in just a second. I'll, show, I'll turn the slide. Last one for this one. Might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. And the expression is, you're already late. So just take all day off. You might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. A very British expression. Believe me, Americans would know this one. So what do you think that means? Or can you give me another example? Any ideas? Um, so we did something, something wrong in this case. Um, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in uh, this case, it is like, I don't know, maybe not really gave up, but something like resigned from something. That's exactly the idea. You're resigned to it. Yeah. Is that the word? I think that's the word I heard you use. Resigned to something. Yes, resigned. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly right. Resigned to your fate or something negative. Exactly. Well, let's take a quick look. Here are the actual answers. You might as well do it. You're resigned to it. You might as well do it. And the other one, of course, was cows come home. Takes a long time. What else? I think that's it. Now I'm gonna see I'm gonna see if I can test your memory on some of these in just a moment. Um, these are a little bit easier. These are all about wild animals. Okay, so one more group, and then I'm going to see if I can test your memory on a few of these. And then we're going to take a walk around the zoo, if we have time, at the end of class. Okay? So, the president's just pretending to be upset about the situation, don't you think? Sabrina? B? Yes, he's shedding crocodiles to get popular support. Yeah, the president's just pretending to be upset. Yeah. It's a political maneuver. Look at the picture, Sabrina. Look at the picture. I Everyone. see the picture. He cried. Yeah, and when you cry, you shed what? What's water? the word? Not water. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Lagrimes. Como se diz lagrimes in English? Yes, I know, but I don't know English. <laughs> Uh-oh. How do we say lagrimes in English class? I don't know. I need my Google Translate. What is it? Tears. I heard it. Tears. So yes. B is he's shedding crocodile tears. By the way, that's a really common expression. Yes, we have in, in Portuguese too. Shedding crocodile tears. Shedding means to exude, to cast off, something like that, shedding. So it means crying, but not really crying. When crocodiles cry and you get close to say, oh, poor crocodile, they bite your head <laughs> off. So be very careful. <laughs> be very careful here. All right? Uh, what about this one? Thomas was very upset when his team let in an own goal. That means that Thomas scored the goal in his own goal, because Thomas doesn't know how to play football. Carmen, <laughs> what do you think about this one? I don't have any idea. Well, guess the wild animal. Well, I guess it's not really the wild animal. In well, the wild case. animal is a parrot. Yeah. So, yeah. how did he feel, good or bad? Bad, very bad. He felt bad. So, mm -hmm. he was blank as a parrot. 
I don't know. Pick an emotion. <laughs> Pick an emotion. Very angry. Oh. Angry as a parrot. Mm. It's it could be, but upset. Yeah, upset. but it's uh, upset. So it's got to be another word for upset. Yeah. I feel just blank about it. I feel just what? Sick of it. Sick. Sick was, of it. Yes, sick he as was a parrot. Sick yes, as okay. a parrot. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, okay. parrots mm -hmm. get sick. You know. <laughs> Teacher, I have a question. Go for it. Uh, I'm not sure the meaning. Mm -hmm. Let in, let in an on call. It means that instead of kicking the ball in their goal, you kicked it into your goal and gave them a point, which is a very bad idea when you play football. And the goalkeeper is going to kill you. <laughs> Basically. That, that's what the Americans did in the World Cup in 2004, I think it was. They scored on their own goal in 2004. Because the guy was trying to pass it back. <laughs> he was trying to pass it back to the defense. And he kicked it so hard, it went past the defense and he scored a goal <laughs> for the other team. Uh -huh. You're not very good at soccer anyway, so... Yeah. And, it, and it was like, a, you know, one of the first times they were ever in the World Cup. So we had to ask, is, do they not understand the rules of the game? Or something like that. <laughs> Anyway. Oh, teacher, I'm not sure the meaning. Can you explain that again? Uh, yeah, think about football. Where do you normally kick the ball? What's your What's your objective in football? Uh, I need to uh, kick the ball into the gate. Not the gate, the goal. Into the goal. Oh, I need to kick the ball into the Go. Right. <laughs> Into the other team's goal, mm. not your goal. Mm. So when you kick it into your goal by mistake, that is an own oh, goal. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I love this. I love this. I love this. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right. How about this one? Anne is hoping that Carlos will stop gambling once they're married, but I oh. doubt he will. I doubt he will. Mr. G, what <clears throat> can a leopard not change? Um, Picture a leopard in your mind. Um, yeah, I have a picture of leopard, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Leopards look different than tigers, because tigers have one pattern, and leopards have another. Um, this, um, I'm sorry, spots. That's it. You got it. You got it. So it's, no, a leopard can't change its spots. That is the right answer. Tigers have stripes. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, we're going to run out of time here. Let's do these last three, and then I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the zoo where you are going to try to create an idiom of your own. One that you may have heard, or one that you might know that's not in this list. He complained that his business was about to fail so often. No one believed him when it finally did. He, <coughs> blank, wolf, once too often. Mm -hmm. Shinyue, what did he do here? This is an action. Uh, which one? We're on. I don't have numbers here. The the wolf one. Mm -hmm. He complained his business was about to fail so often that no one believed him when he finally did. It's like what kids do. They make up mm. things and they say it over and over and over again. And after a while, uh, you you don't believe them. They cry the wolf. Fantastic. To That's right. He cried <laughs> oh. wolf. Uh, that, that means uh, that everyone in the village is afraid when you cry wolf. But if you do it too many times, they don't believe you. And it's a fairy tale too. It's a Spanish fairy tale too. It's the same phrase in Spanish? 
No, we're not those afraid. It's a it's a fairy tale. It's a fairy Sorry. tale. Mm, yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, yes. In in the Chinese culture, it has uh, a similar fairy tale. Mm -hmm. About about the wolf. Yes, For a yes, shepherd who was always crying wolf, and uh, then one day he finally came, and nobody believed him. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cry wolf. But look at this one. He looks kind and gentle, but he's not like that at all. He's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Carmen? He looks gentle. He looks gentle. He looks nice. But it's not real. Mm -hmm. He really is a what? A wolf and what? Um, it's like a lamb's clothing or something. I can't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wrong, wrong animal. Okay, I think. In sheep's uh, clothing. In ah, sheep. sheep's clothing. That's I it. was close. It was a lamb. It was a sheep. <laughs> We've also got a sheepish smile. Or sheepish, sheepish grin, right? Because you look so innocent. You look so innocent. Mm -hmm. You're like a sheep, a little sheep. Last one. I'm sure everyone is thinking about the divorce, but no one ever mentions it. That's right. It's certainly the elephant in the... Never heard that before. <laughs> Where is the elephant? The elephant that everyone sees, but no one mentions. I don't know. No? No one? I don't remember. We have similar expression in Polish, but I don't remember. <laughs> Give us uh, a clue. The, the elephant are in the fridge. <laughs> exactly. In the fridge? <laughs> <laughs> no. The, the elephant in the room. That giant thing in the middle of the room that everyone is pretending doesn't exist. Ah, okay. The elephant okay. in the room. Like uh, in the first picture. That's it. Like, mm. it, like our, our pink elephant. Yeah, here. yeah. Although in this case, in this case, there's your elephant in the room. In this case, there's one little problem. It's Actually, no. Look, no one is looking at the elephant. So, yeah, maybe this is a good example. Mm -hmm. uh, it works. Yeah, it works. Sure. Mm -hmm. The elephant is something that you probably can't miss. Let's put it that way. So, I've got a few exercises for you to try. You could do them on your own and correct them yourself because I believe the answers are in the last page. Here and here. Okay. And here. But what I want to do to finish class is go here. Let's take a stroll through the Idiom Zoo. I'll call out an area, like, for example, the monkey cage. You start to think of an idiom as we take our stroll. Once everyone has their idiom, we're going to tell a short story by trying to connect them all together. So your first job is to find an idiom for an animal in the area. And the next thing, once we all have one, we're going to see if we can tell the story by using our idioms to advance the story one step at a time. Let's see if we can do a quick version of this. If you're not sure how this works, you'll see in just a minute. Okay, so we enter, let's enter the zoo at the very bottom. Okay, see we enter the zoo down there at the bottom. Now, tell me an animal you see at the very bottom when we enter the zoo. Carmen, what do you see down there? We're right by the tree right now. We're right by the tree. See where we buy the tickets at the petting zoo? A giraffe. The giraffe. Ah, there's a giraffe. Okay, excellent. And we've got a giraffe to the left. Sorry, to the right. And what do we have to the left? That can I can't see it properly. How does this one You can see the words, though. What's that house all the way to the left? Uh, says rats or bats or what? What does it say? On the on the right it says bats. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm I'm gonna put you near the bat house. Mhm. Mm so you've got a bat and you've got giraffes. Start thinking mm -hmm. of your idiom. Then uh, we're gonna 
Then we're going to walk through the entrance. Mr. G, when we walk through the entrance, what's the first animal that you see? We're walking up the screen towards the center. What do you see up there? Uh, rhinos. Rhinos, yeah, rhinos. Okay. Rhinos. It's always good to get one or two other choices. So you see rhinos, and do you see anything else near the rhinos? Um, what else can you identify? Um, I see a, I see a bunch of things. I see rhinos. They all look pretty happy. They're being fed. And then in the middle, what's that? What do you see in the little lake, the little pool? Um, I crocodile. <laughs> a crocodile. And it looks like there's even some fish in there. Those little black things look like little fish. Okay, I'm going to put you in the middle, Mr. G. So you're going to try to find an idiom that involves either rhinos or crocodiles or even possibly fish. Okay? And then we're going to keep walking up, up and to the left. And Mr. Shinyue. Tell me something. When you get to the top of the screen near the staff room, what do you see up there? Mm. Hey, I see a lion. Is it lion. a lamb? Lion. L A M B? Lamb? Lion. lion. Oh, lion. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I see lion. a lion. I see a lion by the lucky wishing well. Is that what you mean, over there, on the left side? Yes, yes. Ah. Lucky. Mm. Okay, excellent. So, pick an animal. Pick an animal. One of the animals in your area. I'm going to pick one, too. And we're going to see if we can join these together in a little story. Okay, pick an animal. Start to create your idiom. If you're not sure about your idiom, do your best. <laughs> you can use an idiom that we learned earlier, or you can choose one of your own. Okay, and so you stopped at the Lucky Wishing Well. I'm going to keep walking up uh, over there by the cable cars, and I see something that looks like a baboon. Looks like a, some kind of a monkey or baboon. Hmm. So I need to think about this. Hmm, monkeys and baboons. Hmm, what kind of idiom do we have with monkeys and baboons? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Hmm. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, I got, I got my idiom. Okay, I got it. So, all we need is a character now, and then we can get started. Anyone have a good character? Man? Woman? Hmm. I'm thinking of a number from 1 to 10. Carmen, if you guess the number, you don't have to guess the number. You just have to tell me whether it's odds or evens. Okay? Okay. If it's, if it's evens, it's women. If it's mm -hmm. odds, it's going to be a man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what number am I thinking of? I got one. You, um, you. you say odds for men and even for 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 women. Right. Odds for men. Right. Okay. Three. I've got three. <clears throat> the 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 number I was thinking of was actually was actually ten. Mhm. Mm That's so me. You were going. You were going. <laughs> you were going for a three, which would have been men, but it was actually ten, which is women. So it's a woman. And what's her name? You you get to name her Carmen. Maybe her name is Carmen. Yeah, her name is Carmen. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> okay, Carmen. What was your what was your idiom for either giraffes or bats? Um, I I don't have anything about giraffes, but I know yeah. an idiom about uh, bats. It's like blind as a bat. Excellent, excellent. So mm -hmm. our story begins. Carmen, who was. Blind as a bat, <laughs> went to the zoo. zoo. Excellent, excellent, excellent. It's and a then, walking cane. <laughs> maybe. Excellent. <clears throat> and Mr. G, what happened next? Use your idiom. What happened next? 
um, with Crocodile. Yeah. So, Crocodile Tears. Um, Excellent. So, what's the next thing that happened using Crocodile Tears? Um, okay. She was ups she was upset because she couldn't um I don't know, get the job in a place. She wanted to work in the zoo. Maybe. <laughs> she want to, maybe she wanted to make a tour and she you know had she had a croco crocodile tears because she didn't want to have this job. <laughs> mm, okay. She was upset because she couldn't get the job of zookeeper, of course, because yeah. she's in the zoo. <laughs> so she cried, but these were only crocodile tears. So why is she that? Was, because I really she, wanted the, the job. No, oh, you have a you have a, a secret ulterior motive, Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that. <laughs> Carmen is very devious. <laughs> very devious. Very devious. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Shinyway, what happened then? These were only crocodile tears. You got to make the last part of the story somehow fit with your idiom. What do you think, Shinyway? Shinyway, you're a natural storyteller. This should be easy for you. Hmm. <laughs> my brain, my brain is starting to work now. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. I'm very hungry. Your brain is starting to work, or your brain is stopping? Yes, I'm very hungry. It's time for supper. Oh my God. I give a chance to the other students. Mr. Jose? <laughs> I, I, okay, uh, John, I have to use an idiom, no? Yeah. He, he was uh, sick as a parrot. <laughs> sick as a parrot? Oh, my <laughs> God. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder how our story is going to end. So okay. let's see. Carmen, who was blind as a bat, went to the zoo one day. She was upset because she couldn't get the job of zookeeper, so she cried. But these were only crocodile tears. Now we gotta fit sick as a parrot with with the last part. She was upset but not really upset. They were only crocodile tears. I'll leave it up to you, class. How does our story end with sick as a parrot? Any ideas? I was just like, can I kill all the animals? What's that? I killed all the animals. <laughs> I killed oh, all, all the animals. Story. <laughs> <laughs> so she, so it turned out she was a psychopath and killed all the animals. <laughs> of course. But later she was sick as a a parrot about it. Okay. It's uh, it's not going to win any Academy Awards. No. I don't like the ending, but that's it. But there you go. And to remember your, your animal idioms, just remember this story. Okay. And you'll never forget. <laughs> and that are, those are a few of the advanced animal idioms used. Do you feel better? Do you feel smarter? Do you feel sick <laughs> as a parrot? No, but it's good. Right. It was good this class because I didn't know most of the uh, idioms, so I'm just gonna keep this light. I'm gonna try to do one idioms class every week, at least. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, one okay. one per week. One and per maybe week. we'll come back. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll come back to this one as well because there's so many things we didn't do. In the meantime, mm -hmm. try those exercises on your own. And later today, I will try to remember to put the answers on the last page. If I forget, send me a message, okay? Try those on your own. Copy that link and uh, do it uh, on your own. Send me a message if you have questions. We'll back in 30 seconds to start our business class, we're going to learn how to give opinions about a 
interesting situation in a business article. We're going to be talking about strategic alliances. Ooh. Stick around for that in just a minute. Bye for now, everyone. Thank you for the class. Have a nice day, all. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank okay. you. Bye.